for us to adequately address the question of rights and traditions we need to begin in the beginning which are the foundations for the institution of traditional leadership so there are a number of issues that first we must address one is perceptions versus reality um, there is a general perception in Zimbabwe that traditional leaders are captured uh, to use the colloquial language meaning that traditional leaders do serve the interests of certain elite groups uh, this cuts across the political divide um, there are traditional leaders who are believed to have been captured by the ruling party um, some of them have um, appeared publicly um, chanting slogans we have a famous high court case of chief charumbira in which he clearly declared his support for the ruling party and in a case that was brought by a human rights organization to the courts uh, the chief was asked to retract his statement um, so that is the qualification for those who believe that traditional leaders are captured by the ruling party recently there is the case of chief Nema, who promised millions of votes um, for president emerson Mnangagwa. that again be that again becomes a case for arguing that traditional leaders are captured but the story does not end with the capture of traditional leaders by the ruling party. There are also traditional leaders who have openly supported the opposition. And they have, especially on social media, become heroes for the opposition because they have openly declared their support for traditional, uh, for, for, for the opposition. That again is a form of capture uh, by politicians, um, as we will see as we get to discuss the question of rights and traditions. Um, so that's, that's the perception that traditional leaders are captured. But the mainstream perception seems to believe that it's okay for traditional leaders to speak in support of the opposition, but it's not okay for them to speak in support of the ruling party. As we get deeper into what the laws say, it will become very clear that both forms of allegiance to political actors are in violation of the principle of political neutrality which the Constitution of Zimbabwe advances. So we need to first deal with that perception. The second perception is that all traditional leaders support repression um, the problem with that perception is many actors human rights campaigners in civil society have then tended to paint all traditional leaders with one brush um, this again is not true there are traditional leaders who have remained resolute and have refused to identify with any political formations and advancing the old age wisdom they are leaders to all their people and they continue to defend and protect the human dignity a good example is when we launched the state when we launched the state of peace report in Blawayo. Uh, one of the traditional leaders who attended that meeting actually made an appeal to civil society to say many traditional leaders cross the line because they lack knowledge. They lack knowledge of how they are supposed to operate. And on behalf of traditional leaders, he went on to appeal to civil society leaders to provide them with the information. The report Rights and Traditions was actually pro pro produced as a response to that appeal. Now that tells us that not all traditional leaders are merchants of repression. Let's look at some 
reality check in terms of the statistics. Um, first, when we think traditional leaders are captured, we then tend to reduce our interaction with them and we then fail to engage on the critical conversation of how we can work together with traditional leaders in a partnership that advances human rights. We then tend to disengage and treat traditional leaders as political activists and many traditional leaders are yearning to engage and work for human rights. The consequences of disengaging from the traditional leadership are dire for the cause of human rights. This is because the following statistics are going to show us that we can never achieve sustainable human rights culture without working with traditional leaders for the following reasons. First, 67% of Zimbabweans live in rural areas. And these are areas that are under the leadership of traditional leaders. If we disengage from traditional leadership, it means we are potentially alienating 67% of Zimbabwe from participating in the human rights conversation. The second statistic that I want to share with you is 60% of Zimbabweans, according to a recent survey by Afrobarometer, they still trust the institution of traditional leadership. Meaning to say what they say carries weight in these communities. So would you rather have people who are speaking to 60% of our communities speaking the gospel of human rights or being alienated from human rights advocates? Thirdly, 72% of Zimbabweans insist that traditional leaders must stay out of politics. 72% of them believe in the principle of political neutrality that is advanced by our constitution. That means we need to be interact with the institution of traditional leadership so that they live up to the expectations of 72% of our people who expect political neutrality from them. So these are important statistics. Um, now, I want us to take a brief uh, reflection, uh, a, a short break for us to reflect on these foundational perceptions versus reality of the role that traditional leaders play in our community. When we come back, we then actually look at the legal framework governing traditional leadership. Perceptions are one thing. Expectations are one thing. But the actual legal framework on the ground is very important. Africa Freedom is coming, coming, coming 